Hello everyone, today I want to talk about the overseeding that I did last fall. The one question that I get the most about seeding from my channel as well as from my neighbors was what seed do you use? This time I chose to use a mix of tall fescue and Kentucky bluegrass and I mixed them in roughly 5 to 1 ratio. I actually did some research around the different seeds and the main reason I went with these two was because these are the cool season grasses that are compatible with the weed killers that I use. And why a 5 to 1 ratio? Because tall fescue is slightly easier to maintain than the KBG, but you need the KBG for filling bare spots because it is able to spread through the roots. Okay, now the actual seeding process. The whole seeding process can be laid out into 8 different steps as you can see here. Firstly, you have to mow the lawn at the lowest high setting, which I did the day before. And before we spread the seeds out, we need to make sure that there will be enough seed to soil contact. And number two, that the seedlings will be able to establish their young roots. So which means we need to loosen up the soil and also detach your lawn to maximize soil contact. So the very best way to loosen up your soil, no one's gonna argue, is to core aerate, which can be done with one of these. But at this time, as a pure DIYer, I don't have one of these and I didn't want to rent a truck to be able to rent one of these. So I decided to skip core aerating the whole lawn, but I did buy a manual core aerator to do only those parts that had seriously bare patches. To be very honest with you, I have watched tons of YouTube videos on this and I've seen many many videos where people have overseeded without any aeration or dethatching. So there it is. After some hard work of manual aeration, I went for dethatching. Thankfully, a dethatcher is something I could afford as a DIYer and here I used a dethatcher from Greenworks and a berry powered one because I just have multiple berries from them for my lawn equipment. Here you might think, hello, where's the pile of thatch? But if you look closely, I can promise you, you'll end up with a lot of thatch. And I kept on running the dethatcher, then bagged them all with my lawnmower. And there was some remaining thatch, so I raked them in as well. Okay. Now finally the seeds! As I mentioned earlier, here I'm missing tall fescue and Kentucky bluegrass in a 5 to 1 ratio. You notice that these seeds are coated in blue, which is because of Scott's Water Smart coating technology. Anyways, get them in your spreader and spread around! This is by far the easiest step in the whole process. I looked into it after the spreading and I could see some seeds not getting any seed to soil contact. This really highlighted the importance of proper detaching. And if you look at more bare areas, you could see that they are getting soil contact. So in this case, it was definitely helpful to rake the seeds in. And also I put down some topsoil to the most bare and problematic areas of the lawn. After all that comes watering. I was taking it easy with using sprinklers. Then I could also get some rest after all. After some watering, I went out again to apply tenacity. Again, the tall fescue and Kentucky bluegrass are resistant to tenacity and the tenacity label in fact indicates that we can apply it while seeding. You can just see how much time has passed. You can see the sun setting down during this application. Okay, now day two. I set up my sprinklers to water the lawn and I think the real challenge here with the seeding is that you have to water every day for at least three weeks. Anyways, I'm gonna try my best to keep up with it and I'll come back with a review of how it went. If you liked the video, please please subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching. Bye bye!